Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thank you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a second or third or fourth painting, thank you so much for coming back and I look forward to seeing what you guys paint. So today's video is perfect for my first time painters. These are great videos to just kind of get you comfortable with the brush, comfortable with mixing your paint and the kind of the way these are set up you're going to do kind of a crazy abstract background you are welcome to switch out colors if you want um, and then we'll use black paint and put a silhouette design on there um, and that kind of solidifies your composition so again this is excellent practice just to get comfortable with the process of painting and perfect for my first time and beginner painters if you want to do a different silhouette design um, just Google uh, the subject matter and silhouette of what do you want to do and feel free to switch it up and make the painting your own. Use this as just kind of a, a guideline, a step-by-step -step of what to do. Um, with that being said, in the description box below you're going to see a link to a supply kit and in that supply kit is everything that you need to grab um, materials, paints, brushes, canvas for this particular painting. So check out the supply kit, grab the materials that you need, and then pick up the video again. With practice, you get better and more comfortable. So keep on finding ways to have a creative outlet on a monthly basis. Your future self will be very grateful that you did. So uh, I think it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun sunset painting or sunrise painting today so grab your supplies head on over to where you have your setup and as always make sure you take your progress photos so today's painting is perfect for my first time painters and we're gonna get really comfortable with a kind of a horizontal brush stroke so we are starting with light yellow and that's gonna be a mixture of yellow and white and we're kind of um, cutting our canvas uh, about in half so putting our horizon line on there and you can either measure it out or just eyeball it and uh, draw your line straight across. And as we add our colors today, we're going to go above that horizon line and below because we do have our sky and then our reflecting colors below. So here you can see I grabbed some of the yellow and was just overlapping some of the um, uh, lighter yellow and now moving into a shade of light pink. And you'll notice that as that light pink overlaps the yellow, it does kind of create this orangish color. And this is one way that we can create this color without actually using orange by mixing our primary colors of a version of yellow and a version of red. So it's kind of nice to be able to do that because this color, uh, this particular painting is utilizing our primary colors. All right, so here, um, we have our few shades of light pink and maybe a slightly darker pink. You can vary this to your liking. And now we're gonna go with a light blue. And at each time we switch colors, you do wanna chain, uh, clean your brush really good in between each color change. Um, so that way you don't contaminate the other color. It's more fun to contaminate the color on the canvas when you're uh, mixing the two colors together. So again, using that light blue, we're gonna fill in kind of the remaining space of the canvas between this light blue and a darker blue. So as you're painting, if you prefer a color, if you want more pinks or even purples in your sky, feel free to switch out your favorite colors or your preferred colors for what you want here. Um, for the Silhouette uh, series, really the defining part of the series is when we get to the black silhouette design. So you really have full freedom to get as abstract, get as colorful, or get as selective color as you want on these backgrounds um, before you put the black silhouette design on. So here you can see I grabbed some of the medium blue and that was adding more blue to our light blue mixture. And um, obviously forgot that one side of the canvas, so I'm actually moving down to a lighter brush and going back to the light blue 
um, grab some of it off the larger brush to be able to apply it to the canvas. So whatever you need to do at home to utilize the paint, if you need to pull it off a, another brush as you switch brushes, or if you need to mix the color again, please adjust to what you need as you paint at home and trust your instincts. Your instincts are guiding you in the direction you need to go for your creativity. Just use these videos as kind of a guideline. All right, so now I'm just actually going back to the light pink and kind of placing this a little bit over some of the light pink already and then even over the blue. So you do wanna do everything that you want done to your background now um, before you move into doing your design. And the blue is a little bit wet as I'm putting this light pink on top of there. So it's kind of slightly giving it a periwinkle, a tiny hint of purple showing in there. So again, get as creative as you want um, on your background before you move into your silhouette design. All right, so as we, you do want your background fully dry before you um, start applying your black paint. It'll just make it easier. So we are using the pointy brush and you can add a touch of water to your black paint and that will increase the fluidity of your paint. But if you already are working with really runny paint, do not add water to yours. So using the brush kind of like a pencil, we're gonna lay the base of the pier and I kind of put a dot, it's about a quarter inch above that horizon line that we did in the beginning. And then I went out probably 60% of the canvas um, and then made the line going back to the edge. Now, as you're doing this, it may seem kind of challenging to draw a straight line. So if you happen to have a wavy line, completely okay. We're gonna call that style and we're gonna say that your pier is dancing. Um, and who doesn't like a dancing pier? I believe um, my uh, Paris Eiffel Tower is always dancing because I can never do that completely straight. So whatever you wanna do to your pier, I was thinking of a South Florida pier and I know they have all those um, pavilions and uh, nice gazebos and stuff on there. So you can decorate your pier to whatever you want. No matter what you do the top of your pier, you do need to put the supporting structures below. And these are the like pylons, the um, basically the foundation for the pier that goes into the water. And you do wanna kind of go below the horizon line on this one as well as kind of keep those level. We will have some reflecting color lines um, from that in a moment. And then you can go back and add the structures on your pier to your liking. And if you've got a specific pier in mind and it's got something iconic on its pier, please feel free to incorporate that into your painting. Now here, still using that light pressure with the brush, we're kind of giving a hint that the colors from the pier are reflecting onto the water. And again, just that, like I said, that light pressure, you can kind of start at the base of the structure of the pier and wiggle down towards the bottom. There's not an exact science for this. Just kind of have fun and don't overthink it too much. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you for painting at home. All right, and if you want birds in the sky, that's what I'll be adding here. Completely optional. If you want to put a plane in the sky or a hot air balloon or anything you want. And even if you want to throw a surfer or a paddleboard person um, on the water, go right ahead. All right, so now we're going to move into the blue paint and we're going to kind of uh, accentuate the water ripples. So from that horizon line going down and underneath the pier, similar to how we applied the black reflection lines on there, we're going to give these long, kind of slightly wavy, um, horizontal lines to again indicate that this is the ripples on the water and we will be doing this with um, some white as well and as we do this I'm going to encourage that you get out of your chair walk five to ten feet away from your painting and look at your painting from a distance and notice how it's translating are you starting to see the depth um, of the pier move off in towards the distance and the horizon line and are you even telling the difference that you have your water below the pier and your sky above so kind of learning to look at it from that perspective will just help your skills grow because that um, distance is the normal viewing distance for most artwork. So now moving into the white, doing the exact same thing and you can put a rising or setting sun right above your horizon line if you like. And again, those exact same lines that we did with the blue, um, 
just indicating the ripples and the highlights on the water. So I'm really proud of you guys. You've done a great job. I hope you are enjoying the process of painting and just kind of escaping your world just for a short amount of time while you complete this. All right, no matter what you paint, please send me pictures, email them to me, and don't wait too long to paint your next painting. So thanks again, have a great day, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. <music>